Welcome, Chai Nation, to my backyard. This is your chef, host, Mirwan Irwani, a.k.a. the Maharaja of Masala. <laughs> and uh, today, Chai Pani Mom at the helm there, laughing at my hey. dad jokes. Hey, everybody. And uh, today, we, if you notice, you are in my backyard. Uh, what happened? We lost power. A tree fell on the line exactly at 425, five minutes before showtime. And power's down for God knows how long. But the show must go on. And if you can't cook Indian food anywhere, then you really shouldn't be cooking it at all. <laughs> uh, let me think about that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> anyway, so we moved the show outside. I got my trusty uh, uh, Everest Chef Camp grill. But we've got propane, we got backup propane, and we got all the fixings for a fantastic meal. Today we're going to be making sali boti. Uh, what is sali boti? Sali boti is uh, a Parsi style le spicy lamb stew with little matchstick fro potato fries on the top. I don't know where this whole situation came about from. Ooh, Why? let's ask Vish, because he just joined. Well, Vish, Hi, Vish. probably <laughs> knows the history of this. It's, it's a Parsi style dish, and as you, some of you may know from having watched previous episodes of Shaggy Chef, uh, these are my people, Zoroastrians, that left Persia um, and came to India, oh, about 10th century onwards, um, became a really um, integral part of uh, Indian cuisine, a uh, small group of people, but have had a massive impact on both the culture and the food of the um, sort of um, middle to northern states of India, uh, from Gujarat down to Maharashtra. And this particular dish is really reminiscent of the way Parsis like to cook. It's meat-based, which Parsis love their meat, they're carnivores. There's a little bit of uh, vinegar and sugar, or gurd, jaggery, in this dish. And that predilection for that slightly acid vinegar flavor and that sweet and sour flavor probably came from Iran with them. Uh, they bought a lot of dried fruits and a lot of nuts, and they put a lot of that in cooking. But this is a really simple dish and considered legendary because there's no real well-written documented recipe for Saldi Boti as to where it came from and how it came to be. But thanks to Vish Bhatt, my good friend, who texted me. He's still trying to speak. figure out why you're in the woods. He missed the part where you explained <laughs> the story of losing we'll power. You'll have, to watch the, you'll have to watch the beginning here. But thanks to Vish, uh, he found a recipe from the pages of a legendary recipe book. Oh, that was the, amazing. That book was incredible. Right. It was called the Time and Talent Club, a club formed in Mumbai by probably in the, I want to say in the 30s, by Parsi housewives uh, who got together and shared recipes and probably just, you know, got together and, and chit-chatted about stuff. And these recipes slowly became a collection known as the Time and Talent Cookbook. I've yet to get my hands on one of these, but thanks to Vish, we were able to get a page from the book with a recipe for Sully Boti that I'm going to recap for you today. So, we're in the woods, guys. Rosie's barking in the background. <laughs> trucks and cars are going by. There's fire uh, trucks. You're, well, you're in my background. You're yeah. in my background. Give them, give them a little, uh, give them a little okay. sweep. Okay. So we, we had a tree fall down, and then the tree caused a fire, and then the fire called the fire department, and a transformer blew, and here we are. That's the story. And we're improvising. Okay. And of course, that happened five minutes before we were about to start so, cooking. So um, the recipe for this is really unbelievably simple. It's um, not a lot of spices. In fact, the majority of the flavor, Rosie, is coming from um, onions, ginger, garlic, and green chilies, and a hint of cilantro. A little bit of the aforementioned uh, jaggery, or brown sugar if you don't have jaggery, and a little bit of uh, vinegar. Um, and then some tomatoes to add just a little bit of acidity and uh, liquid to the, to the dish. And a couple of, uh, it calls for green chilies. I only had these uh, orange cayenne, so we're gonna use this. So here's the ingredients. We got a lamb. And I went ahead and la marinated the lamb. When I say marinated, it means about 30 minutes ago. I rubbed it down with a quarter teaspoon of turmeric, a quarter teaspoon of red chili powder. And you guys know I love me my Kashmiri chili powder from Spice Walla. And I love me my diaspora turmeric, hey Sana, from, uh, Hi, Sana. from diaspora. And some ginger and garlic paste. How much ginger and garlic paste? About a healthy heaping tablespoon. I rubbed that into the meat. Oh, here. Okay, there it gotcha. Is. Got that. And it essentially. Um, it, it's, it's a great way of adding flavor directly to the protein before you throw it in the pan to cook. The recipe normally calls for the ginger garlic paste and the red chili powder, the turmeric chili powder, to be added to the onions as they're cooking. But I went ahead and rubbed it on the meat because it really is the same thing. And I like doing this because you're adding that extra layer of flavor to the meat. So when it hits the pan and the oil and sears, it kind of locks in that flavor. And I salted it lightly. Okay? So let's do the demo. The recipe will be online. So don't worry about, um, you know, if I'm moving too fast here because I want to eat. He's very excited about this. Can I just say somebody, I missed the person's name. Somebody is so excited about you cooking Sully Ghosh that you, he's about to cry. Or she's about to cry. Oh, I didn't I'm catch so excited her. to hear that. All right, so onions. So I started off by sweating down some onions. 
How many onions? About three cups of onions. So it was about two, one and a half to two of these big guys. If you got a medium sized onion, whatever have you, it was roughly three cups. Again, this is not a perfect science. We're cooking um, and, and if you have a little less onion, it's okay. If you have a little more onion, you're okay. It's more onion than I normally cook in my, um, uh, whenever I'm making like a stew or a gravy or curry, because most of those are either start with an onion base and then finish with a lot of tomatoes that creates the gravy. This, the onion base, is the gravy. In fact, there's very little tomatoes, so most of the sauce, if you will, is gonna come from the onions being fried in, um, in oil. So, being a smart guy, because I didn't want you guys waiting for 30 minutes while I sweat my onions down, I went ahead and pre-sorted the onions down to this face. Show everybody the beautiful, sweaty onions. Oh, hi, Sana, you just missed your shout out for turmeric. Uh, Vish is out, there we go. Dun, dun, dun. dun, dun, dun. Uh, Vish is asking about red onions. Why are you preferring red onions over yellow for this? Yes, uh, great question. Growing up in India, our onions were always red. They were almost shallot-esque, small little, Rosie. Should Come I put on, the girl. dog inside? Here, I could prop the camera up for a minute and put Rosie inside. All right, why don't we do that? Bear, will... bear with us for a minute. Okay. This show is just getting more amazing <laughs> by the second. Uh, just absolutely fantastic by the second. Um, so, anywho, uh, red onions, good question. Growing up in India, we always cooked with red onions. It wasn't until I came to the U.S. that experienced sort of the sweeter yellow onion over here, the J-Y-O, or even white onions. I do like those a lot. I use them in a lot of different types of cooking. But here, I want that extra bite that zing, that sharpness from a red onion, and that's why I use it. If you don't have red onions, don't worry. Use whatever you want. Hey, Che Pani Mom! <laughs> you don't want me directing the show, trust me. <laughs> I'm just dealing with the fire truck situation. Hold on one second. Bear with me. All right, I'll show you guys what's going on. Put the onions over here. Sweating them down. Okay, thanks, honey. Hi, everybody. Ah, Sorry about that. Professional and, and controller over here. All right, so because I already sweated my onions down, they're at the phase now. We're pretty ready to put the next thing in. Normally, the next thing in would be the ginger garlic paste and the turmeric and the red chili powder and then the lamb. But because I already have it all together, we're just going to dump this right in here as soon as this has um, come to the perfect level of crispiness. Oh, my God. Sam and Vish, they're having a field day with you. We want some sweaty onions. Cooking and sweating onions while we had a near fire miss. Everybody's fine. Don't worry, everyone. Um, yeah, tree fell on a power line, knocked it down, knocked the transformer, exploded, tree caught on fire, fire department <laughs> came, put the fire out. Now we're waiting for Duke Energy to come and fix our, fix our electricity. <laughs> Fish, if you let marijuana multitask while cooking, you'll need that fire truck for your house. <laughs> <laughs> he also wants to know which apartment is his. This is yours, Fish, to come and stay when you come. See that cute little cottage? It's got your name on it. Okay. Yes, fair assumption. Okay, You're right, okay. Sam. So uh, onions are sweated, and there's a little bit of extra oil in the onions, more than usual, because remember I said we're making an onion gravy, and that oil's gonna help those onions really turn into a gravy and not just crisp up and turn into, you, you almost want an onion paste. And you don't want to cook these too far, because again, if they turn crispy, you're not gonna get a gravy. And now we're gonna add the meat directly to it, and that extra oil is gonna help this meat fry. So we're gonna crank this hey, bad boy little up. camp stove is doing pretty good. Oh, this camp stove is amazing. Of course, I'm probably gonna run out of gas. Look at that. It's pretty hot. I'm probably gonna run out of gas in the middle of all of this. Now, it already salted my onions when I was sweating them out. As you guys have seen me do in the past, I like to add a little salt when I'm cooking my onions. Helps them cook faster, pulls the water out. Um, and, uh, and I also salted the lamb. So you're not gonna see me adding salt at any point of the cooking process until we get to the end when we have salt the taste. Because if you guys remember from our cooking lessons that we talk over and over again, salt as you go. Mm. Uh, my okay. camera work is gonna be very uh, shaky today because I'm swatting mosquitoes. <laughs> so this is, uh, uh, Mom, show them what's going on over here. We want the lamb to fry. So you want a pan that's large enough and that's thick bottom enough where we can handle the high heat. And the reason we want the lamb to fry is because we don't want all the spices in the lamb to kind of cook off and just fall into the onions as it would not just cook off, like sweat off. You don't want the lamb boiling. And when you crowd a pan with too much cold protein and not enough heat and oil and not enough space, what happens is the lamb starts to boil almost and sweat rather than, rather than searing. So the heat's high, the pan's hot, lots of oil, and you can see the browning that's happening on the lamb. And it's searing and not leaving, if you look at the bottom of the pan, not leaving a lot of that uh, masala on the bottom of the pan. So we're gonna keep doing this for a few minutes. 
Where are you going to post this for people that missed the beginning? Um, this will be on Spicewalla's Instagram, the one you guys are watching right now. It'll probably be up by this, you know, 30 minutes after the show. Nicole's fantastic at putting it up. And, uh, and, then <laughs> and it'll Sam is cracking mind. me up. <laughs> it'll Sam? also be on Marijuana's uh, Instagram, which is what? Which is at Marijuana Romani. And if I catch this place on fire, it'll also be in the local news. <laughs> <laughs> when the fire trucks come by and see what the heck is going on. Sam's description was close enough. But it explains why we lost power and why we're outside. Okay. All right. While my lamb is cooking away, I'm going to turn the heat down for just a second. And guys, you guys, when people ask me all the time about how much heat, medium heat, high heat, you're continuously monitoring the heat throughout the cooking process. You never just start one heat level. Be intuitive. When you first get your onions cooking, you want high heat. You want them to start browning. As they start browning, turn the heat down a little bit so they don't finish cooking too fast and burn. Same with the meat. We seared it, we got it super hot, but now I don't want it to overcook or, or burn. So I'm turning the heat down just a little bit, turning down sort of a medium low, and that allows me to step aside and do some other stuff. What kind of stuff? Stuff. Stuff, stuff. We're gonna, ah! Oh my God, I didn't bring a knife outside, but okay. thankfully, uh, I have my chai look pani, at your trusty, trusty fucking knife chai that I carry knife. with me all the time, my apanel, um, and I never thought I'd be cooking with this sucker. Um, Show me the little chai pani and Oh, right. Thing. There's a little chai pani logo. I've had Isn't this thing for so 10 years, This guys. was a staff gift and one year. And it is an emergency. Uh, the blade's not sharp. Uh, here's a little trick. If you don't have an iron, use the edge of a cooking spoon utensil, and you can still get a little bit of that. I don't know, honey. You might have, like, adventure cooking in the, as a whole nother as cooking whole nother show. Thing. And that'll give me a little bit of an edge. Yep. Works. All you need is a little edge, and now we can cut up this little guy over here. Okay. This is not going to be the... I feel like I'm in India. Yeah, I'm cooking, cooking outside. Cooking outside. In case anybody's watching, I forgot my knife. Damn it, that's my <laughs> business. This is not how we cook in the restaurants. But this is how you cook when you're camping. This so, cook survival camping. cooking in Asheville. Yes, we'll do you're one right. and a half of these bad boys. Sam and uh, Vish are being very restrained in their heckling of you. Well, they, considering they can, the circumstances, yeah, they can see the circumstances. They don't want to cause marijuana. Ronnie's survival kitchen Sundays. I love it. But All Sam right. is blaming you for now. Her dog barking. <laughs> oh, because your dog's hurt my yeah. dog. Is that how it works? <laughs> exactly. All right, guys. Ah, uh, beautiful. Look at this sizzling, sizzling. Turn down a little bit more. Oh my God, this reminds me of being in Gujarat and having a meat fry, a mutton fry on the streets of uh, Surat late at night with my dear friends Vish and Chidi. Okay, guys, we're going to hack at the cilantro with my little baby knife over here. Oh, that's really funny. The power company is walking around in the woods behind him. <laughs> <laughs> They're probably wondering what all the smells are about. So, you guys have heard me talk about cooking with stems. I love cooking with stems. Um, I think it adds incredible amounts of flavor, not just the leaf, especially if you're cooking it down and it's going to turn into a, you know, all right. A gravy. So, I'm going to turn my uh, green chilies in. That wasn't quite a green chili. What was that? I'm going to put my cilantro stems in. What kind of chili was that? It was just a, a cayenne, but it, you know, normally it would have been green. This is orange, but yeah, it's just a cayenne chili, a Thai bird's eye chili, just a regular old chili, whatever you go. I mean, if you didn't have that and you found serranos, serranos are great too. Okay, and now I'm going to add my tomatoes in. How many tomatoes? I had maybe one large tomato or two small tomatoes. It's roughly about a cup of tomatoes. Everybody's getting very worried you're going to track the bears. <laughs> we have a fence here. Luckily, we have a fence Luckily and a guard dog. <laughs> but just my luck, a bear will find its way to the fence. All right, crank this back up again so the chilies can get in there and cook, as can the cilantro stems. Give the bear the chili pepper. <laughs> yes, we do have bears here everywhere in Asheville. It's true. They might think Marwan's the cousin. Look at his hair. Mm. God dang, that smells good. All right, um, I know this lamb's probably seared enough on the outside to where I feel safe. Um, getting myself a little bit of uh, this gravy here to try. And I'm just tasting for some balance for salt and things like that along the way. I know it's not a completely done dish. Hmm, definitely need salt. That was a hefty pinch of salt. That's a hefty pinch of salt, but. Mm. 
Alrighty, now that the tomatoes have cooked in a little bit. Oh, I wish people could smell this. Why hasn't anybody invented smell-o-vision? I know. For is, cooking this shows, is this is incredible. This is incredible. Okay, what kind of lamb did I put in here, guys? Just lamb stew meat, so basically the, the uh, um, shank or the leg, sorry, the leg of the lamb just cut up into cubes. If you go to the store and they don't have cube lamb meat, uh, but they have a piece of the leg or a piece of the shank, uh, you can ask them to go ahead and cut it up for you and cube it to you in little pieces, especially if they have a meat counter and a guy behind that works at a butcher. Don't be afraid to have them cut up whatever piece of meat you want into whatever you want it to be. I wouldn't put lamb chops in here or anything like that because I feel like, you know, that's... Um, what? Crossing the line? No, 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 it's not crossing the line. I mean, that's a high quality cut that's going to cost a Wasted lot of money. On this dish. And the whole idea yeah. of this is just, you know, lamb stew meat. So that leg, that shoulder, you know, those, those cheaper cuts of meat that are tough that are going to cook for a long time, that's what you want to hear. And yeah, speaking of that, this dish is not going to be done in time for us all to do the taste and smell and all of that because it's going to need to cook low and slow for about 20 minutes once the assembly of it is done. But literally, once it's done, you're just going to put the lid on, let it cook low and slow until the lamb is tender. Uh, what do they call it? Fork tender. Fork tender. That's all they're looking for? That's all we're looking for. And, um, you know, just so that... <laughs> Sam is freaking out about the bear. Okay. It's so funny, Sam. So, guys, we're almost at the um, end here. I'm going to add a cup of water and um, let it come to a boil. Can now, you... you guys have heard me talk about making sure that we add water, the water's hot. We need, because we don't want to bring the temperature of the dish down while we're halfway through cooking it. The problem here is no electricity. This water's not No hot. time to boil it no on the camp stove. So, so you're shocking your meat. Well, my meat was shocked when it saw me in the first place. <laughs> hey, Vish is asking if you could use beef or pork stew in a I pinch. Mean, yeah, you could probably do it with beef, but traditionally it's been done with lamb. Oh, lamb with chicken is traditionally how it's done. You can certainly do it with beef with pork. Yeah, but you know, you're kind of like starting to stray into Vindalu land if you added even more acid and more red chili pepper and more um, and more vinegar uh, and, and good to it. Um, I'd say lamb and chicken are the two traditional ways to do this. Well, the traditional way to do this would be goat meat in India. Mutton, what we call it in India. Uh, I know the English think of mutton as old you. In India, we think of mutton as just goat meat. Um, so there we go. You can see the gravy starting to form. It smells amazing. It smells amazing. And at this point, I'm going to add a glug of the vinegar. How much is a glug? I'd say about a healthy tablespoon. There we go. Bringing this to a boil, and then we'll put a lid on it and cook it low and slow until it is done. And we're gonna add some of this brown sugar to it. Let's say about a about a tablespoon of brown sugar. All right. Mmm. Guys, this is already looking. Beautiful. The vinegar is going to be a little bit raw on the tongue if I try it right now, but that's okay. I still want to check the acid, the salt, the heat. What did the vinegar do? Mm. 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 Um, it's just the, it's it just adds acid to the dish, and it's kind of a thing that Parsis love doing to a lot of their dishes. They add, love adding that sweet and sour component to their mm -hmm. dishes. So whether it's tamarind or vinegar or you know or lime juice. Uh, so in shrimp patia, that Indian dish with the shrimp. Um, there's a little touch of vinegar in it. Even vindaloo, which is really a going dish, uh, the Parsis love it a lot and they make their own variations of it because it's got the um, um, uh, vinegar sweet and sour thing going. And this, it's not a sweet and sour dish, don't get me wrong. That's not the point of the dish. It's a savory dish. But just a little bit of hint of that vinegar and a little bit of that uh, sugar just gives those background notes that makes the dish go mm mm mm. Fish is also saying mm -mm -mm. it helps tenderize. It helps tenderize too. Thank you, Vish. Hey, somebody else had a question. Um, what was the question? I lost it. Oh, here it is. Can you make this in a pressure cooker? Yes. You can absolutely make this in a pressure cooker. I'm going to pop the lid on. Well, let's turn it down first. You're putting it down to simmer? I'm going to turn it down to simmer, put the lid on, and we're going to simmer the second for a few minutes. All right. Your friends are harassing you that you're being such a purist with your boti about not putting pork in it since you put pork in everything. <laughs> listen, listen. <laughs> Get them under control. 
<laughs> Listen, it's a pandemic. I have to start changing my ways. Um, I can't do meat on meat like I used to. Um, yes, a little piece of hammock in there would probably do wonderfully, but no, I'm kidding. So, what is, so that's the booty part. And what does booty actually mean? Booty means a chunk or a hunk of meat. Usually when it's meat, as in like a piece of beef, a piece of pork, goat meat, um, that's usually what we call a boti. Now a piece of chicken could also be called a boti. I mean, really it's describing a hunk of meat, if you will. Um, but usually a piece of chicken cooked that way, that size, you know, uh, if it's, especially if it's grilled or cooked in a tundri oven, we call it tikka. So just colloquially, if somebody were to say a boti something or the other, you would assume it's some type of red meat, um, um, not necessarily chicken. But, um, um, and even this dish, if I was describing this as a chicken, I'd be calling it sully chicken or sully murgi, not sully boti. And so what's the sully part? Sully literally means sticks. And I don't know how the Parsis came up with this, but they essentially ended up putting matchstick fries, crispy matchstick fries on this dish when it's done as a garnish. Because it's delicious. I mean, of course it's meat and potatoes. It's gonna be delicious. But it's got but the texture of the crunch. Fries? I know that Parsis, I mean, I know, I'm a Parsi. Parsis love their crisps. That's what we call what in America is called a chip, or we also call them wafers. So we love our wafers. Um, I'd say Parsi's probably per capita buy more wafers than just about any other ethnic group in India. This entire, um, you know, legendary companies in India that make crisps or wafers. And, you know, every time we go to Pune, my dad and mom would come back with just bags full of the stuff. Budani's is a famous brand in Pune. We bought a lot of these That's crisps. amazing. Somebody just wrote about Budani, right, as you said it, on MG Road. MG Road, exactly. Synchronicity. Exactly. And always come back. So maybe that love for the fried potato chip, the crisp, the, the, the wafer, translated to then topping this dish with it. I've had other dishes that actually have been topped with wafers, uh, like almost like baked dishes or casseroles that have been topped with a papidepar, you know, that means potato on something or something on potato. Um, but where the hell was I gonna find in the middle of a pandemic, um, little, uh, little uh, shoestring matchstick fries. And I certainly don't wanna spend, you know, an hour cutting and tiny little sticks here and then frying them off. Um, so what I did was I went and found a bag of organic frozen hash browns. Uh, let them thaw, spread them out on a sheet pan, cooked them off, and hey, it's close enough. I mean, that's What's not a bad substitute. What's the word that makes Vish have to take a shot? Hack, right? Was that the ha was that the drinking that game exactly word? That's the drinking game. It's crispy, it's crunchy, it's gonna work perfectly. If you don't have this and you still want to kind of experience this, just grab yourself some plain old potato chips. I mean, ruffles. I don't care, and crunch them up and put them on the top, and and you'll still get that. But if you can make you'll yourself get the some potato crisp, crunch or buy them. I know there are stores that sell jars of matchstick, you know, shoestring potato crisps, right? kind of like in the, probably where they have panko or breadcrumbs. So this is what's going to end up on top of this dish when it's all said and done. There's a couple of questions we missed. Somebody was asking about the pot. It's not a lodge, but it's a? It's a stob. Um, both are fantastic companies. Like I have a lodge equivalent of this, which is slightly larger, and a stob. I like this particular one because it's shaped like what we call a kadai in India. It's got that bowl walk-like shape almost that you know that we love cooking in because um, it allows sort of you know the heat to be modulated from the center to the sides it's great it's great for frying in and it's great for high heat cooking boy this is really bubbling Let me it's turn that bubbling away the camp stove that. is hot you don't put any spice on these potatoes did you um on the potatoes no okay no, i mean you could probably salt them all right let's try, turn that down a little bit more didn't quite have the controls of my camp stove like I somebody do. else was asking about if we have a spice walla storefront in Asheville which we don't have we have a factory in Asheville we don't have a storefront yet we used to have one but because of the pandemic it's not right operating. well it was at the factory so we, we shut that down so when this dish is done it's going to be served with this on top you can eat it with rice you can eat it with rotis you can eat it in Parsis love them some rotis in fact that would be my preferred way to eat this silken soft rotis like you get at uh, Britannia and company in, uh, in Bombay to mop up the uh, saliboti with, that'd be the best way to eat it. And what I love about this kind of food is like, we'll eat it any time of the day. So it doesn't have to be necessarily lunch or dinner. You can go at four o'clock in the afternoon to Britannia and order yourself a saliboti or a sali chicken with, um, with the rotis. And oh my God, it's so delicious. This gravy is gonna cook down. We don't want this to be a really sauce heavy dish. It's not a curry, it's not a sauce. It's almost sort of a medium dry onion gravy so it's going to cook down and the water's going to evaporate and it's going to be gorgeous um well any other questions or comments Vish is saying to put a fried egg on top mm -hmm. and the guy that um knew the place in Pune that you go to says or you could get a naan from kayani you get a naan boy 
it. So you want it to cook down significantly from there significantly to make it drier. Cooked. Exactly, and that's what I'm saying. It's going to take about 20 minutes for this to cook down and make it a little bit drier. And that's how Keanu long it'll take and for the co. land. <laughs> and that's how long it'll take for the land. But you can kind of see how, you know, the base of this is mostly onions, and they're going to continue to melt. I mean, think like French onion soup. Uh, onions just caramelized and melting, but obviously reduced much thicker than this. All right, guys. When does the cilantro go on? Someone was asking. Well, I already put the stems in. I'm going to put it on the last five minutes or something because I want the The freshness. leaves go on last. The leaves will go on last. Yeah. I mean, they'll go on for the last two minutes of stirring it in just so that it'll be fresh and fragrant and you get that cilantro bloom in there. If I was to put it in now and keep cooking it, we'd just lose all that fresh cilantro flavor. Because the stems are in there, there's a little bit of that background cilantro flavor. I mean, I don't know if I imagine it. Maybe it's just purely a, a placebo effect, but I like, I feel like I can taste it in the background. And the only two spices we used in this dish, pure spices, were um, turmeric and red chili powder. Everything else has been all about the freshness of the onions and the cilantro, the ginger, the garlic, um, the tomatoes and the onions. That's the spice for all the spices. All right. Is it gonna be delicious? Well, folks. One last question before yeah. you sign off. Um, Yes to boti kebabs in the yard next time, Vish. That's a date. Um, someone else is asking, what can you do to get a darker brown gravy without making it bitter? Um, caramelize the onions more. Cook the onions even more and you'll get a darker brown curry. This will darken as it continues to cook. I know it looks a little brown right now. It will get darker, but the onions, it's about getting the onions. And, and I was, you know, we're in the backyard. We're kind of rushing this a little bit. Um, you know, if I would have taken my time and cooked those onion downs a little bit longer and they would have browned a little bit more. And, but you just gotta be careful to not get them to where they get like burnt or crispy. But yeah, that would have given you that dark brown gravy. In fact, if you go back and look at my um, Vindalu recipe online, you'll notice the color is a lot darker um, because we cooked, we cooked it a little, long, little bit longer. Someone's giving a shout out to the best Sully Ghost that they've ever had was at your aunt's house in Pune. Oh, fantastic. Glad to hear that. I know, it's a, I haven't had this dish since I've, was, since I've been a kid. And again, I mean, there's recipes where there's absolutely no tomatoes in it. Um, there's recipes where there's a handful of tomatoes in it. But I trust the good housewives of uh, the old Parsi Time and Talent Club that have been writing these recipes down from the 30s. That was an we amazing know, book, We don't know fish. who to attribute this one to, but uh, it's already tasting amazing. And I'm sure by the time it's done and the lamb's melting, lamb is melting off the bone, it's going to be amazing. All right, guys. Check on your mom's getting bitten. I'm getting by bitten mosquitoes. by mosquitoes. Somebody's well, last question. Yes. I lied. The very last one. What kind of salt do you like using? I like kosher salt. And that's a coarse kosher that kosher you got salt. there. And there's, yeah. you know, there's two brands that are the most popular. Um, here, here's what that looks like. Um, you know, uh, Diamond Brand and Morton's. It really doesn't matter. You got people that swear by um, Diamond Brand. You get people that swear by Morton. Uh, Diamond Brand is a little bit more flaky. Uh, Morton's is a little bit more sort of granulated. I like Morton's because that's just what I'm used to and I know when I take a pinch roughly how much it's going to be. But yeah, that never cook with table salt, it, you know, unless it's just unavoidable. And just bear in mind that a pinch of table salt is going to be a lot saltier than a pinch of uh, Morton's because of just uh, how much more actual salt you're getting in your hand or sodium you're getting in your hand. What else? That's it. That's it for now. All right. Well, thank you all for joining us on this wild adventure in the backyard. Wonderful adventure. I mean, this is kind of cool, honey. I think yeah. we should, we should definitely, um, definitely do some more shows out here. Okay, uh, we need more bug spray then. We need more bug spray. <laughs> 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 Thanks for watching. Catch you all next time. I'll post a picture of this dish when it's done online so you can see what the final product looks like. Try this one at home. Recipe should be up by tomorrow. Any questions, call me. Post your attempts at... Um, at Marwanarani at SpiceWallerBrand.com and uh, and tag me and I'll be I'll be happy to check it and see how it went. Maybe your dish will be better than mine. All right, bye everybody. Take care. Thanks for joining Thanks us. Thanks for joining. Bye.